everlasting syllabub. This time on Catch Up With Max and Jose, episode 18. So welcome to Catch Up With Max and Jose. It's been a moment since we've had an episode. It's been kind of crazy. Um, I'm trying to just do other things. We've had a few live streams, right? Yeah, we've had a few live streams uh, to kind of make up for the fact that I have not been actively posting any new episodes. It's a lot of work. It's a lot You've of work. Been busy. I've been and I don't, I don't help. <laughs> like, I don't. I well, don't do anything. You have your own enterprise going yeah. on, so I will not fault you for not helping, quote unquote. But um, yeah, the live streams have been kind of fun. They've been a little spontaneous, so yeah. uh, I've actually kind of enjoyed them. Um, I don't know for people who have missed them or have seen the ones that I've put up on my channel. I've been on camera for the last three, I think. People know what he looks like now. Oh gosh, yeah. Early on, I did He's mention that- um, Any opponent? <laughs> as soon as I had lost some of my COVID weight and felt more confident, I would finally get on camera. Back to the gym. Slowly <clears throat> inching our way there, getting ready for our Hawaii wedding. As I look over you and you're wearing your uh, tropical shirt, so. Aloha, <laughs> We're on our way. But um, before we talk about syllabub, yes, one of your older, more delicious, and easiest to make recipes, and more popular episodes, super popular. I actually want to ask, like, what's going on here? Like, where's our big red chair? Where's the big red chair? The red chair is now over there. Actually, it's where it should be. Um, and this is a bar because starting hopefully at the end of next month, next or this July. I will be doing extra episodes each week uh, called Drinking History, where I'll be making... So I, I do... Each each month I do a Patreon happy hour with a bunch of my patrons, and we make a historic cocktail. And there are just so many out there from the... Mostly from, you know, the 1800s, early 1900s, but there are some drinks that go on further back. And I, I'm like, well, I should be sharing this with, with people. So we're going to be making cocktails each week, historic cocktails, historic drinks, you know, and other things, beer and whatnot. Um, and then talking about their history, but also sometimes just the history of whatever. Um, and I would love feedback because you're seeing it. I would love feedback on what's going on behind me. So we can't have these because the, the lights. So I need to either have nothing behind me or put something else up that doesn't have any sheen to it, or get a green screen and have like a bar behind me. I don't want to look hokey, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I like um, hokey things. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever seen the show How to Drink, that's like his setup is ridiculous. Clearly we don't have that. It's not a green screen, he has an actual no, he like. he has like, I think it's like a really nice which, bar. Which by the way, a lot of people are like, you're coming for his gig. So not. But. I told you a while ago to reach out to Greg. I know. I want to do something with him. Um, Have you reached out to him? No. Oh, no, my no. God. Man. I need it's to. been months. Um, but, uh, our, I mean, our stuff is obviously very different. It's just like me and Townsend's. I mean, obviously incredibly different. Yeah. I don't, I, was, I don't think How to Drink really touches on the history of I have not seen enough, but I think that much. I remember when you did a meet episode, he actually had one around the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was interesting. But also, but so different. Like, could not have been more different. You know, there's room the for thing. everyone. and That's the special thing about YouTube. You are the one that makes it, you know, a tune? different. Oh, right. So, I mean, there are channels out there who blatantly are just like, I'm going to just copy this. And it never works. Because if it's not your thing, you ain't ever going to sell it. You ain't going to stick with it. Fair enough. I was going to comment that the bad thing is if you have a bar and we start filming here for a bit, catch up with Max right here on this setup, we're not gonna have too much cat action, but I saw Jamie's head poking around. So as soon as he figures out that he can actually he can go get up, up there, here. yeah, I, <laughs> this is really strong. We'll be back in business, is it? My goodness, what is it? He's trying to kill me. Uh, yeah. uh, drunk Max is uh, fun. Oh, Max, is. do you think it, it'll, you'll end up being like a drunk history, or is it just like I'm making the cocktail? I don't think it'll be a drunk history, but it might be a lubricated history. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep this PG. <laughs> it's PG. Oh 13. PG 13. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's, um, such a prude. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, well, it's exciting. Um, when do you think you'll start uh, 
drinking history. So the goal is, the goal, don't hold me to this, the goal is Friday, July, it's like 19th, whatever that Friday is. It's like the second to last Friday of the month. Got it. Um, I don't even know why that's my goal, but it is. You like arbitrary goals, I've noticed. I do. <laughs> well, it gives me, it gives me, you know, otherwise I'll never do it. Yeah, I hold you accountable. Yeah. And speaking of holding you accountable, um, as of this episode, you're almost to three quarters of a, to a million. So it's, yes. or three fourths of the way to a million. So you have almost 750,000 subscribers. And Whoops. for the people who are not watching, or who are watching, see the drinks hit me too. <laughs> At a million, you're supposed to do a musical episode. Yeah. So get working on that eventually. At 900,000, reach out to me. You'll and say, you better start working on this. <laughs> or you mean like just nudge you? Because I don't even know what, this, what it's going to be. Yeah, reach out to me. Look over <laughs> on the couch and be like, start working on Dude, this. Dude, what are you doing? Um, because I don't exactly know what it's going to be. I have taking, ideas. Taking ideas, yeah. I have ideas. We're going to have a dance number. Um, maybe your favorite musical song. Like, it needs to be like Leo, still Leo history. the Cadet. Yeah, Leo the Cadet. I think yeah, that things, like that. things like that. Things like that. A couple like people that. sent it to me. Somebody yeah. sent me the whole score to that. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, people were sending really cool things. Like today I just got yeah. a re really good um, fan art of us and the cats, yes. which is even more exciting. Yes. And That's I looked so fan. thin. I was like, man. I know. I add that to much my vision my board. fan art. Than... <laughs> <laughs> and I realized, That's all right. Don't we all? I mean, yeah. Only Picasso drew people uglier than, than in real life. Oh, is that so? Oh, well, it was Cubist. You know, it was like oh, my okay. nose would be over here. My <laughs> well, I don't eyes think anyone looks here. like that. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> most everybody else, you can make it. I wouldn't say ugly either. It's... I like how Day God drew people because it was just kind of like fuzzy and stuff. So everybody looked like really smooth. He probably skin. just needed glasses. Probably. <laughs> anyway. Get back on track, Max. Well, Sorry. So this is what this show is. It's 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 a it's a, it's a mess. It's a but mess. I have been listening to podcasts. I've been listening to Trixie and Katya's podcast, Drag oh, Queens, yeah. and Sister Rivalry with Bob and Monet. But also um, our our follower Julie Rose. She actually yes. had you on a podcast for episode right fourteen, at the beginning, when right I, when you were starting to like, like. I think she reached out right after Garum, which. Yesterday, when we were filming this, yesterday, so that would have been was the day that I noticed June fourteenth happened. June fourteenth, yeah, something special happening. Woke up on a Sunday morning, and I was we were at my parents in Phoenix. Oh, I remember. And we had I had like six thousand subscribers, and we woke up, and I was at ten thousand subscribers. It was like, what? all right, but we'll talk Garum, and I think we're only a few episodes away, so oh, we'll touch right. on the phenomenon of Garum right, and, right. and my goals for Garum for you. <laughs> One day, I have goals. I, oh my god! Yeah, you have your goals. I have my goals right. for you. All right. On top of the goals that I have for myself. All right. Okay. But anyway, so Julie Rose, uh, she has a podcast, Love, Love What You Love. So yes, she had you on there, sweet. and she actually recorded me uh, like two weeks ago, and finally went live. And it's just me rambling about Pokemon and what it means to, it to me. This morning. That's on my walk. Don't listen to me. It's so awkward. We live together. You don't need to. <laughs> but I never hear you talk about Pokemon. I don't. Oh. Stop. Aha. Uh -huh. Sarcasm. He looks to camera. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Have I not been doing my job? <laughs> Who am I if I'm not talking about Pokemon? But anyway, check out her, uh, her podcast, um, Love What You Love. Yes. And uh, episode 41. And you're 14. Oh, Aww. it's like a pairing. I don't know. It's abstract. The palindrome. Can Is numbers that... be palindromes? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody tell us. Can numbers be palindromes? <laughs> there are smarter people than us out there. Plus a two-digit palindrome isn't really... <laughs> it's not very exciting. It's like, what are the odds of that? The word I <laughs> is a palindrome of the word I. <laughs> um, anyway, so syllabub. Or syllabub. So, okay. So here's the deal with syllabub. So, the reason that I ended up saying syllabub at the beginning was simply because... Uh, it, it, it sounded better for, for what I was doing because um, I was talking about the word silly. But when it was first spelled, because spelling is not a uh, like a standard standardized thing until the last couple hundred years and even then, um, in very early spellings, it tended to have a Y right before the first A. So it was ciliabub or silly, you know, we don't know how it was said. Probably not ciliabub, but probably ciliabub. Uh, and then that was dropped around the 
mid 1600s, but it still appears until the early 1700s. By the 1700s, it's gone. It's always syllabub, sometimes uh, sometimes spelled with a Y, sometimes with an A. Um, but yeah, it, it's it should be pronounced syllabub. Syllabub. All right, cool. Well, there we go. There you, you people, you've been it's like you redeemed yourself, or <laughs> mm. I don't know. But um, there's a lot of comments about that. But what is syllabub exactly? Because it's delicious. What did you whip exactly? Was it just cream? I whipped it for 30 minutes whip yeah basically it's whipped cream um but it's whipped cream flavored with different things and different uh and this is everlasting syllabub so regular syllabub would have more liquid in it and so it would like separate so you'd have like this foam on top and then liquid on the bottom and drink it like a cappuccino but everlasting syllabub added more sugar added more uh cream rather than than liquor and so when it was actually put together, it was completely stabilized like whipped cream is. But it's alcoholic whipped cream. And they have different flavorings. This one was with orange water. It's been with rose. I've seen it with anise. You know, all sorts of different flavorings. And then different liquors as well. It could be, um, I, I had seen a few different liquors. But now I have people making it with all sorts of different flavors and all sorts of different liquors from so turn to sake to soju to all all these different things and it's really kind of exciting it's awesome no and then for people who are not of age or who don't drink plenty of people have made it without any kind of alcohol and just different yeah, flavored juices white grape juice orange juice apple juice though if you are going to make it with a juice i suggest reducing the amount of sugar because it's going to be super super sweet it's already super sweet uh so adding juice rather than alcohol it's going to be really sweet yeah, and you mentioned that it's a great summer treat, and it is, and it's summer, and you haven't made anything. I don't have time to make anything. <laughs> it's not on the, you know what, I just made you some delicious Parmesan ice cream. It's still in the refrigerator, or the refri freezer. Have you taken pictures of it yet? No, so don't touch it until I I cannot eat pictures. it until you've taken pictures I'll of it. I'll take pictures tomorrow. Which, something to look forward to, because it's actually yes. something that I enjoyed, and I it's rarely good like anything. It's a good episode. Very nice. Coming up. Very nice. Um, so this episode you kind of filmed in the earlier days of, of the pandemic, which, My by the way, it's June 15. So as of today, when we filmed in California, we no longer no have masks. to wear masks, which is no masks at the gym. It's kind of exciting and kind of scary. I know, and I'm excited because I don't have to wear. Like, but at the farmers market, everyone was still wearing them, so I, I wore mine. I'm, I'm all for it. You know, whatever makes you feel comfortable and safe. But for me at the gym, like I have to put on my contacts every morning, which is annoying. Yeah. I because can, with glasses, it would fog up. I could never get the soap trick to work. Well, so. I haven't been able to wear sunglasses in a friggin' year, at least, you know, while walking outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then in the early days of the pandemic, on top of the the bread making that everyone was trying was getting into because they were picking up hobbies, one of the comments in the in the channel says everyone during quarantine is whipping up instant coffee but instead this channel is whipping up everlasting syllabub that's right which by the way we never actually did do the whipped coffee thing i wonder if it's good it must have been good right whipped coffee yeah like i, I must have you missed that. that boat i was busy you didn't working on a channel <laughs> a baby channel that yeah I didn't, I didn't it didn't take up nearly yeah, as much time then. not then i don't get why but you also didn't have tiktok you also didn't have oh, TikTok was it on it. tiktok no, yeah it was a tiktok, TikTok. trend i, I can't I miss a lot of TikTok I trends. I watch the tickety talk. Um, yeah, the there was that pasta one that was a few months ago with the cheese. It looked delicious, but I don't know. No, okay, I'm sorry. You lost me. <laughs> All right. Anything else that was left on the cutting room floor regarding syllabub? I don't remember. What about amber ambergris? Ambergris. Where did that come in? So it's it. What is it again? So she had a chocolate recipe that had like star anise in it and musk, which comes from like the musk ox. Um, and ambergris. Basically, it was filled with ingredients that are typically associated with perfumes. Um, and ambergris, I guess, has a good smell. I've never smelled it. I want to get some. You can get it. It's super expensive. Um, and I think it's illegal to have it sent to California. So we'd have to go to a different state. Um, but it's something that is uh, inside of a sperm whale's digestive tract. It comes out. Tract? track i don't know that's sexy comes out and um it's flammable and and can be used like that but it can also be eaten and and smelled 
Though I don't think anybody cooks with it now, or for a long time. Probably too expensive. And weird. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> All right. I want to try it someday. <laughs> well, that's everlasting syllable for you. There you go. So, um, before we wrap up our episode that has been a long time coming, and I'm so sorry again because we'll do another one. We'll soon. do another one soon. I promise. Um, or check out our podcast too. Well, I'll do another one. Th those are easy, a little easier, easier to record. <laughs> a lot less editing. Um, I want to bring up something that I, I kind of constantly struggle with. I am much more introverted than you. I would say you're... You are? Much more. Oh my. Yeah. Uh, you're very that. extroverted. You know? I'm not though. You are a homebody, but I feel I put like... My, I, I can put my personality out there. Yeah. But, like, if I'm meeting 10 new people, I, uh, I'm a wallflower. Like, I don't like meeting new people. I force myself to talk to new people. Okay. I guess neither do I, but I think I'm a lot... I don't, not a lot, but I'm maybe a little more warmer sometimes. Not always. Than me? But I tend to be more warmer as far as, like, more open and inviting and being willing to talk and, yeah, and no, listen like to people me. i'm a like great me. listener and you yes. are a great talker i'm a great talker yeah um it comes out of insecurity i have plenty of that but no it, it comes from practice that's what yeah. it comes from you know and that's what you're doing he's starting to do some big presentations at work and everything and you get you're already so much better than you were a few months ago but it really does just come from practice like i know they say like oh picture him with your or picture him naked or um, Does that actually work, whatever. though? Is that something you ever tried? No, I haven't, because that's weird. I, it's I awkward, that's right? Weird. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm good at not paying attention to the people in the room. It sounds like I'm... So, but when you're straight. talking, and, or, like, who are you talking to? Like, if you I to... pick someone to talk to. Someone mm -hmm. to talk to. And if there are 40 people around... I'm talking to that one person. Yeah. And that one person doesn't actually even need to be there. Um, you know, I'll often talk to my mom or to Mo, my friend Maureen, um, no matter what, you know, if I'm giving a talk or, or, or during the show. Usually during the show, I picture Maureen watching. Um, so they don't even need to be there because they're not going to respond anyway. So. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try and take it to heart. I'm, I'm kind of doing the practice makes perfect. That's re recording myself that's on quick time and kind of like it. try to get rid of any like mannerisms that are the not ticks, really. The, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I still have them and I, I know what I'm doing. Like I know that I'm picking, picking your my fingers finger right now. But You're on camera. I know. I'm not going to edit that out. But I always do. People are going to see your fingers. But I always do. Yeah. I'm, I'm much better than I was. I used to bite them a lot. I still do sometimes. You still bite them. But a lot less than I used to. They look decent. Yeah. So, but the only reason I ask as far as techniques, because in my head, you're more extroverted, more outgoing, more fun. But also, like you were on musicals, like on yeah, stage. Yeah, I've been on, on big stage. Stages I've been on and, screen. I've been, yeah. I yeah. mean, talk about practice. When you sit in front of, or stand up in front of 5,000 people and have to sing, you get comfortable real fast. That said, I think standing on stage in front of 5,000 people is a lot easier than standing up in a room of five people. It really is. Because you can't really see, it's just a mass of, of people out there when you're on stage. And often you can't see anyone because the lights are so bright. But in a room with five people, you can imagine what all five are thinking of you the entire time, you know? Whereas you can't do that with, with tons of people. So a lot is actually better than just a few. That's why I prefer none. That's why I film alone. <laughs> True. It is. I don't even like you in the room. No yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I like to film alone. I'm more comfortable. Yeah, because I'm, 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 I make noise and I also judge from afar. He, I can hear him judging in the bedroom while I'm, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll mess up like five or six times in a row and I can just hear him. My eye roll. Yeah. Yeah, I roll. You're pretty loud anyway. I, I would be. Yeah, able to no, hear you. I can. I can be heard. <laughs> I know I can. <laughs> well. Thanks for the tips, Maxwell. And I hope that, that that actually helps people out there as much as myself. Because, you know, I get the shakes and I get nervous, the dry mouth, like prolonged talking. My, my voice just fades away. And, and Don't let your voice fade away. Like finish until the end of the sentence and you can, and that will actually help you in the next sentence. Always finish to the end of the sentence and slow down. 
you speed up when you when you're talking in front of people yeah like take a breath a breath seems like an eternity when you're talking in front of people but it's not and if you don't breathe then the people listening don't breathe and that makes them feel nervous subconsciously it makes them feel nervous for you and you don't want that yeah. i have constant anxiety breathe okay finish your sentences loudly and breathe respira okay well what is uh, around the bend because we we had done some live streams and you kind of did a quick update there but one of the live streams that we did was on your channel and that one we did it and gone forever so yeah um, and i think in that one you mentioned that you, you do have uh, a cameo in the history channels yes youtube series with sola coming this, up this very soon. saturday i'll june be on 19th. june 19th i'll be on um ancient recipes with sola on the history channels youtube channel a lot of people said oh i don't have the history channel it's on their youtube channel so i will post links and everything on that same day we have um uh, you, and you, a special episode of Tasting History. It's the first time that I'm actually with someone. There were some technical difficulties. I'm still learning how to work two mics and, and other other things like that, but I think it turned out well. Um, and we're making fried chicken. And then, um, yeah, that's what's coming up in the in the very new future. And then, obviously, the, the ice cream, Parmesan ice cream. And then what's drinking that? history, which I really do. Please give me feedback on what's behind me, on other things that should be on the bar, what you want to see. I'm. This is kind of a from the ground up thing. So um, what I should wear, I was thinking Hawaiian shirts because that's what I own a lot of. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't want to put on a costume or anything because I still it's still tasting history. It's just in a slightly different location and a slightly different format, but only slightly. Um, it's, they're going to be shorter episodes, basically, for sure. Um, but let me know what should be behind me, if anything. Yeah, right, that's all I got. That's all you got. Well, actually, one of my last requests. Clefairy. Our special guest. Ditto Clefairy. Right? Yeah, it's actually just a ditto. But actually, technically, technically, it's a Poké doll. In the video games, you would oh. it's an item, and you would give the Poké doll to a Pokémon you encounter, and it's supposed to distract them so you could run away. But it is a, the, the doll itself it, it is. It says ditto as Clefairy. Yeah. It's a Poké doll. It's a Poké doll ditto as Clefairy. <laughs> there we go. Well, thanks again, everyone. Uh, I feel like I apologize every time for <laughs> delays in posting episodes. You know what? It's, you do what you can. I'm doing my best. It's the second job. You're not allowed <laughs> to quit Disney, so. What? No? Nope. Take care of me. I need health insurance. <laughs> But I want to say uh, thank you to your viewers, my viewers, our viewers yes. for the love and support. Thank you for the fan art, for liking, yes. for subscribing, and just all the positive comments. It's it's really uplifting, I think. I'm actually almost to 30,000 subscribers, yeah. which is kind of crazy. Um, yeah. I'm not quitting my day job anytime soon. But you know what? This channel started as a hobby, and it kind of allowed me to have a voice in this whole like yeah. experiment thing that you're doing. It's an experiment. Yeah, so um, I just want to say thank you. And check out uh, Max's Toad in a Hole episode. Toad in a Hole. And um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, soon-to-be fathers, and have a wonderful rest of the week. Indeed. Cheers. Bye, everyone.